Today we're going to have a look at setting up Spotify D, which is a lightweight daemon alternative to the official Spotify client. So the reason you use something like this is say you're using a program like Spotify TUI. Now to actually use Spotify TUI, you need some sort of Spotify client running somewhere on your network. Now you could do that with the official Spotify client running in like a separate window on your screen. You could do that with your phone. Or, the better alternative is to just have a really lightweight daemon running in the background so that you can connect to Spotify and you don't need to be running the official client as well. Because if you're using the official client, you might as well just use the official client. So let's just go over to my main screen and see how this actually works. Now, first thing I should probably mention is that if you want to do anything with the library that this is working with, it's using a library called LibreSpot. So, if you want to write your own sort of Spotify daemon or you just want to completely ignore Spotify D and Spotify 2 and directly interact with Spotify through a library, then you can do all of this through LibreSpot. However, LibreSpot isn't set up to be a daemon, so you can't use it through something like Spotify 2 -E. Anyway, now that that's out of the way, let's actually look at how to set this up. So when you initially install it, the way you do that is basically, if we look down here, you're going to need a couple of libraries depending on which distro you're on. So make sure you check these out. If you're on Arch, it's going to be much easier, but on anything else, you will have to go and actually manually install these libraries and these applications yourself. One thing to keep in mind is you can actually do this on macOS as well. I don't know if I have any macOS viewers, but if you're doing it on macOS, you need to have port audio installed as well. So if you just want the absolute basic installation, which only runs on Ulsa, I believe, then you need to just run cargo build dash dash release. I assume if you run it on macOS, it'll probably be configured for port audio, but do not quote me on that. I know that the default installation will just run on Ulsa. So if you want any other sort of features, like for example, pulse audio support, what you're going to have to do is actually run some feature flags. So if you want all of the features that are available, all you have to do is run this line right here. So what this will do will basically compile it with Pulse Audio support as the back end. It'll compile it with uh, Keyring support and Empress support. So the reason you want to have Keyring support is because it actually needs to log into your Spotify account. Now, there's a couple of different ways we can go about doing this. One of them is to just put a plain text password in your configuration file. You can also use Pass or you can use your system key ring. Now, Empress support is actually pretty cool. Empress will basically let you do media key support. So the installation that I've got, I've got all of these features set up, but if you want to use a different backend, then you would put in, say, Ulsa backend or Port Audio backend. Now, let's just keep going and see what else we can do. So I'm not going to go over this Empress stuff. If you do want to use something like Player CTL, though, it does actually support that, which is really cool. Uh, that's more stuff about the audio backends. So yeah, if you just want to compile the release version with like no Empress and no other stuff like that, all you're going to have to do is go cargo build dash dash release dash dash features pulse audio backend. But this isn't that interesting. The thing that we're actually going to care about is the configuration. But before we get to that, I did mention that it's really, really easy to install on Arch and that's because it is in the AUR. Now, there is one problem with this and if we type Spotify in here, you'll notice what it is. So give it just a sec to load. There is a bunch of different versions in here. So the one you're going to want to download is either Spotify D or Spotify D full. So Spotify D is just the basic version that has Ulsa support and nothing else. Now, if you have Ulsa and you don't really care about any of the other features, that'll work just fine. If you want all of the features, so that's the Ulsa backend and also the Empress and Keyring stuff. Now you might have noticed that there was a couple of others in here as well. The problem is that there's, I think the developer said there is 32 different combinations of features you can have. So what he's going to do is basically get rid of all the others. If other people want to set them up for themselves, then they can, but the main developer is only going to maintain Spotify D and Spotify D full. So Spotify D full won't download the port audio features because Port Audio obviously isn't being used on Arch Linux, but it will download everything that is actually relevant to Arch. So anyway, let's go have a look at that configuration file. Now, basically it is in your .config folder, and it'll be in a folder called Spotify D. Now the Spotify D folder is not made by default. You have to make this yourself, and then it'll be in a file called Spotify D.com. Open this up, and basically what I ended up doing 
was I just copied the default configuration into this and then started filling out the stuff that I actually cared about. Now, the first line we have in here is about your Spotify username. So if you don't know how to get this, basically go log on to the Spotify website and you'll see that it'll be right here at the top. I don't think you can actually set this. I believe it's generated when you actually make your account. So just basically copy this in and stick it over here. The next line in here, there's a couple of different ways you can do your password. So basically I was just having my password sitting in here as plain text. Obviously not the safest way to do it, but it's a Spotify account. I don't particularly care about my password in there. I probably should because I have my payment info attached to it, but anyway, I don't really care about it too much. I don't have it synced up to my GitHub. So if, in case anyone's looking for it, no, I don't have my uh, Spotify dconfig actually in my GitHub. But there's a couple of other ways we can do it as well. And the first one is to actually use a password command. So for the password command, you could do things like uh, print out a file or the more sensible way is to use something like pass. So there's a few examples down here about how you'd set that up. So the password command, you could set it up with pass, pass, Spotify. I don't actually use pass, not sure how it works. Or the other one you can do is use the key ring, which obviously you'd have to look at how to set up your key ring if you're on anything else. But on Linux, it seems to be something like this. I've never actually dealt with key rings before. So at least manually. So I'm not really sure how you'd go about doing that. But I'm sure if you have a look through here, it seems to pretty much explain it as you would expect. Now, the next stuff we have in here, I've got my backend set. So the backend can either be Ulsa, Pulse Audio or Pulse Audio. If you're using Pulse Audio, make sure it's set to Pulse Audio. I don't believe it'll even work if you don't. And the other thing, make sure if you're using Pulse Audio, you do not include the device and the control because what will happen is Spotify D will just completely crash. I'm assuming this is a bug. I don't think it's supposed to crash if you try to set the Ulsa device name and the Ulsa control name when you're using Pulse Audio, but for whatever reason, it seems to do that. So I'm just gonna get rid of these lines because they're not really useful. Now this next one we have in here is actually pretty cool. So when a song ends, you can basically make a script run. So I've got a script called Song Notify. Now I'll just show you what that script is. It's nothing too special, but it'll be in my scripts folder and it'll be song, what I call it, song notification, something like that. Basically what this does is it'll download some metadata with player CTL. So it'll download the title, the artist and the album, and then it will send it in a notification basically. And I've also just got the Spotify logo there just because I wanted the Spotify logo. I might add some stuff to this so it also downloads the album art. That might be an interesting thing to do as well. I'm not really sure though. It'll obviously slow down the notification, but it might be pretty cool. I'll, I'll try it out, I guess. What else do we have in here? So the next one you might care about is actually setting your device name. Now I've just got this set to Arch Linux. This is basically what will come up in Spotify Connect when you're actually running the Spotify daemon. So yes, if you didn't know, Spotify daemon actually does come up in Spotify Connect, which is cool. So if you wanted to do something like have Spotify running on your computer and then control it with your phone, for example, then you could do that. So obviously you can set this to whatever you want, except for spaces. I don't know if special characters work. I would suggest not including them, but hey, if you want to live life on the edge, maybe try that out and see if it works. Next up, we can set the audio bit rate. I've just got it left as the default as 160, but if you like your higher quality audio, set it up to 320. I don't know if you'll notice it too much. I haven't really done much of a test on that. We also have a cache directory. I've got my cache disabled, but basically you can have your audio data cached so it'll load quicker. I don't really care about that. It loads quick enough anyway, so I've just got that disabled. We also have volume normalization. So I've got this enabled. Basically, that'll just normalize the, the volume level pretty much. So you can change the level you want it normalized by. I've just got it set to negative 10. I believe that is the default setting. I haven't actually touched that, so... I couldn't tell you where you probably should be setting that. I think it'll really depend on the sort of music you're listening to. You can also set up a zero conf port, a proxy, and also you can set your device type. So in Spotify Connect, if you didn't know, there's a little icon that shows basically what the device actually is in Spotify Connect pretty much. You can set this however you want really. I've got it set up as a computer, but you could have it as a tablet, a smartphone. I think default it's set to speaker. But you could also do a TV, AVR, STB, and an audio dongle. 
None of these settings down here actually change the functionality. It'll just change the icon in Spotify Connect. So it really doesn't matter what you actually have it set as. Just set it how if you want. I just like it to be a computer just because this is running on a computer. Anyway, what you're going to want to do now, there's a couple of different ways you can actually have Spotify D running. So you can set it up as a system D service. It actually explains how to do that a bit further down on the GitHub page. So you can run it as a system service. I don't like doing it as a system service though, and it's a very good reason for that. So Spotify D, I've noticed when you have it paused for a, I, I guess a couple of hours sometimes, maybe even half an hour, for some reason it seems to lose connection to the web API. I don't know if this is a Libre spot issue, if this is a Spotify D issue, what this is, but for some reason it continues running. So it still says it's a Spotify device, but you can't actually use it. So you have to do something like actually restart Spotify D. So I don't like it running as a system D service. I know you can have it set up so a system D service will like be set up to restart, but I find it a bit easier to do something else. So typically what I will do is I will have, let's just go to a new screen so I don't close any of that stuff. Typically what, what I will do is I will always kill Spotify D if it's been a while since I've actually been using it. And then what I'll go and do, as you can see, I haven't used it since my last reboot. Then what I'll do is I run SPT to actually bring up Spotify TUI. But SPT here isn't actually opening up the Spotify program directly. What it's doing is it's running a little script called launch Spotify or launch SPT. Basically, it's a very, very simple script. All it's doing is checking if Spotify D is running. If it's not running, it'll run Spotify D and then it'll run SPT. This doesn't deal with the problem of having Spotify D you just completely die all the time, but it does make sure that it will be running every time you actually launch SPT or whatever Spotify interface you actually want to use. So if we just launch Spotify, or if we just launch Spotify TUI right now, so we run SPT, which I've got bound as an alias within my shell. Basically, we launch it like this and give it a second. We look in here and we do have a device in here. So if I try to play something, I'll just mute my sound and we go into a playlist. It should try to actually play it. And yeah, as we see, now it's actually playing the audio. So obviously, I'm not going to let you hear it because I don't want to get copyright struck. And as we can see up here, we've also got a notification. So I've also got a couple of things bound for media controls, but I think I'll save that for the player CTL video. Now I should have mentioned this earlier, but one thing you do need to keep in mind is that Spotify D and LibreSpot won't actually work without a Spotify premium account. And the reason for this is because if they do set it up to be like that, specifically if LibreSpot sets it up to be like that, then what would happen is that the Spotify team would just crush them just absolutely crush them with their legal team. Because there are ways you can get around. If you look on the Android App Store, you can find things like Spotify, uh, no ads and things like that. You can get around the Spotify API and make it so free accounts can listen to stuff with no ads. But the problem is that Spotify really doesn't like that. And you can probably guess why. It's because they'll be losing lots and lots of money. So... LibreSpot isn't set up like that, neither is Spotify D. You need to have a premium account. It is a little bit annoying, but if you're using Spotify, you probably already have a premium account. I don't know why you'd really use Spotify if you don't. You might as well just be listening to music through any other method because you don't need ads when you're listening to music. But anyway, I think that's pretty much everything for Spotify D. This should get you to a point where it's running. If you want to work out an interface to use, I did a video on Spotify TUI. There's other ones you can use as well out there, but Spotify TUI is my favorite right now. Before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So I want to thank Nathan, Andrew Road, Okulari, Ray, and Zilver because that makes this channel possible. Without their support, I wouldn't be doing this as well today. So if you want to support the channel on Patreon or you just want to have your name read out at the end of a the video, there'll be a link to my Patreon down below. If you want to monetarily support the channel but you don't want to do it through Patreon, there's also some Amazon affiliate links down below as well as some other stuff down there. So if you want to buy the gear I use or you just want to donate on PayPal, check all that stuff out down below as well. I've also got my alternate video platforms and my BitTube. So go check out all those links down below as well, as well as some other stuff as well down there. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.